Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Kellner. I'm a cerebrovascular neurosurgeon at Mount Sinai, and I treat patients who have acute stroke. My name is Fyodor Panov. I'm one of the functional neurosurgeons at Mount Sinai, and uh, we collaborate together on uh, paired vagal nerve stimulation, which is one of the new exciting treatments to help chronic uh, stroke sufferers. There are a few different kinds of stroke. Uh, the kind of stroke we're talking about here today is ischemic stroke, and that's where a blood vessel supplying blood to the brain has been blocked for some reason, leading to an individual to have a stroke resulting in some kind of neurologic deficit, like difficulty speaking or difficulty moving an arm or a leg. Um, and this kind of stroke has a very challenging recovery. And until recently, we haven't really had any good treatments to help augment someone's recovery. So today we're going to talk about new options that have just become available. Recovery from a stroke uh, often is very challenging and requires uh, full effort on the part of the patient and the patient's family to fully engage and maximize uh, the patient's recovery. A lot of recovery happens in the first six months and often recovery will slow down after that. It doesn't completely stop, but it will slow down. And sometimes that pace seems like it's very slow and even and the patient can have a hard time recognizing that they're continuing to improve. Um, but recovery long-term really is possible. And I do see that in quite a few patients. For a long time, we've been looking for something to augment recovery after that acute period and after the recovery starts to level off. And vagal nerve stimulation seems to be something that's shown that it can really help augment recovery after that initial six month period. And that's the part of this that is so exciting. Previously, we've been unable to offer patients anything to help their chronic recovery. So this is one of the first devices that potentially can help. Paired vagus nerve stimulation is uh, connecting uh, exercises, rehabilitation exercises, together with the stimulation that is delivered to a small nerve in your neck. And uh, this is done chronically. This is done uh, on an outpatient basis in the rehabilitation center. And we're hoping that as these programs around the country take off, eventually folks are doing this at home and are able to trigger the stimulation of this device as they're performing their rehabilitation exercises. The way that it works is this is decades and decades of research initially in, um, in mice and then non-human primates and making their way all the way to uh, stroke sufferers. And uh, what we have found out is stimulation of the small nerve in your neck allows us to really decrease the inflammation in the brain, which is one of the main ways that we can aid in someone's stroke recovery. And at the same time, we think that there is an aspect of this, this is neuromodulatory. So we're actually helping the brain rewire and helping patients regain function that they lost during the stroke. The vagal nerve stimulator is implanted in a short outpatient procedure, usually about an hour to an hour and a half. The patients are asleep for this and the surgical team makes a small incision uh, to get to the nerve, which is located between this big muscle in the neck that we call the SCM, sternocleidomastoid, and the windpipe, which we call the trachea. A small incision is made horizontally, so it's uh, cosmetically very well hidden in one of these horizontal creases that everyone has in their neck. Uh, during the surgery itself, we do a careful dissection, get down to the nerve, and we wrap tiny little coils, tiny little contacts around the nerve itself. Another small incision is made just below the collarbone, and that's where the device itself goes, where the majority of the battery and kind of the brains of the device are. And those two areas get connected under the skin. So you have a small incision under the collarbone and a small incision in the neck, and the device rests and lives down here while the active stimulating wires are up in this area. If we go back and look at the trials of uh, where this device was really helping folks, um, we tend to wait about six months after the initial stroke symptoms. That allows any non-natural recovery that would have occurred to happen. And at that point, we can really reassess if you as a patient are a candidate for this procedure and if the extra help that the vagal nerve stimulator can provide would be of benefit. Uh, and there really is no limit as to how far away from stroke you could be. Uh, in the trial, they had patients up to 10 years who still received benefit. I think that's something that's really exciting about this is that this is applicable to somebody who had stroke many years ago. And they may feel like they've hit a plateau in their recovery. 
but by engaging in this program and by trying this vagal nerve stimulation, they could have a, a second boost to their recovery. You know, leg weakness was not studied in the trial, but there's no reason to think that leg weakness wouldn't also be helped in the same way that arm weakness is helped. So we're gonna be following that in our patients. The indication is for arm weakness, but we think that leg weakness and leg recovery is probably also going to benefit, but we don't know that for sure yet. You know, speech and cognitive problems, we think are also probably going to be helped by this therapy. We know that arm weakness has helped, uh, and that was what was studied specifically in the trial. Now that there's an FDA indication to implant this device in stroke patients, we're going to learn a lot more about how patients are helped in different ways. We are really hopeful that patients will also see improvement in their leg strength and their cognitive function and their speech, but we don't know that for sure yet. Um, but it's going to be exciting to see all the different ways that patients recover with this treatment. The important part to stress here is if you think that something like this would be helpful to you, you most certainly should reach out to your healthcare provider, to your neurologist. Uh, it's important to check in whether you would benefit. Uh, as of right now, there needs to be some movement in the upper extremity uh, trial base for you to benefit from this procedure and from this treatment. But we most certainly would work together with you to figure out if the device would be helpful. So right now, if you're in any way doubting and you've been struggling with the effects of a stroke, please reach out to your physician. I think one of the main um, stresses for all of us and one of the rules in medicine is to not do any harm to the patients. Uh, and sometimes operating very close to the stroke itself puts the patient in a little bit higher risk of a repeat stroke or another complication. So uh, we think that it is wise to wait a certain amount of time uh, after the stroke symptoms have settled in. Trial-wise, they waited about six months, as we said before. We think that as this device and this technology <clears throat> starts being introduced across many centers in the United States, we will slowly start performing the procedure closer to the stroke and see if that actually offers additional benefit to patients. But there will be at least a waiting period initially right after the stroke uh, until the patient is stabilized and until the team feels that this is a safe procedure to do. Fortunately, this treatment has already been proven to be effective. There was a large scale randomized trial that completed last and was published last April. So about a year ago, um, and that trial showed that vagal nerve stimulation for stroke recovery was effective in improving upper extremity movement. They didn't look at other things like leg function or speech or cognitive function. So we don't know about that for sure, but we do know that we do know for sure that this treatment can help upper extremity movement. Um, it is also covered by ins most insurances um, and it's not experimental. And in addition to that, the, the amazing team at Mount Sinai will be working through the next several years to try to see what else we can discover as to the possible benefits to patients from vagal nerve stimulation. So as Dr. Kellner has said, really the sky is the limit. You know, the, the lower extremities may get better and we'll find out that together, cognition and speech, uh, but it takes a team to get this to work. And that's why we're really excited to be here together and to try to help these patients.